accessibility is the best loyalty program you can deliver. More effective than any mileage card, any fidelity card, anything. <laughs> that sounds good. Jonathan Hassel interviews Axel Lebois on mobile accessibility. Today I'm with Axel Lebois, um, Executive Director of G3ICT, a global initiative for inclusive uh, ICTs. So thanks for taking the time to chat with me today, Axel. My pleasure. Um, you're based in Atlanta, yes. and I think we first met in San Diego. That's right. For those people who maybe aren't familiar with G3ICT, um, could you tell, some, tell me something about the organization and what your aims are? In order to look at the background for, for G3ICT, the global initiative for uh, inclusive uh, information and commercial technologies, um, one needs to look back at uh, what happened in 2006 when the United Nations General Assembly finally approved uh, uh, a long negotiated text of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. It's a very important milestone in the history of, of the disability movement, and that is the first time there is a human rights treaty that was designed to protect the rights of persons with disabilities. Uh, it took about five years, and the interesting thing about that treaty is that for the first time in the history of international law, uh, the people that are supposed to be protected by the treaty took a uh, very, very active part in its editing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was thanks to technology, because while the negotiation was going on in the UN, in New York, in the UN headquarters, uh, the chair of that committee who wrote the convention, who is actually the current chair of this ICT, mm -hmm. uh, uh, managed to get to bypass the procedures and allow real-time reporting of what was negotiated on the internet. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, people from all around the world on the internet contributed their ideas, their suggestions, raised uh, issues, uh, which actually ended up making the text of the convention extraordinarily practical, down to earth, and really useful, both for persons with disabilities and global mm -hmm. Historically, when we talked about accessibility, you really talked about the built environment and transportation. What the convention did, it said, okay, accessibility is accessibility to the built environment, transportation, and information and communication technologies and all of their application services. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, uh, what used to be a pretty simple thing to deal with in terms of compliance for most governments became very complex. Sure. Because suddenly you had to make sure that telephony was accessible, television was accessible, websites were accessible, ATM were accessible, electronic just were accessible, voting machines were accessible electronic documentation were accessible, database of the government were accessible, everything that's digital. Sure. So we need an advocacy initiative that has to be multi-stakeholder with industry, persons with disabilities and public sector working sure. together to actually identify the issues, bring solutions, promote solutions and you know kind of support anyone around the world who actually tries to implement those uh, dispositions effectively. Mm -hmm. sure. That's why we were born. That's what I've been doing for the past seven years. Yes. Is there any sort of one maybe opportunity or threat um, in where you see digital technology going that um, that will really kind of impact on disabled and elderly people? I think the big opportunity is uh, the mobile platform. Uh, I think you you will you you will find that in the past five years we have seen more mainstream accessibility features in mobile products than in the entire history of IT before, uh, in terms of access and uh, low cost uh, of those solutions. And furthermore, I see that in some ways, and uh, that's I call it the eye phenomenon because of the iPhone. And, but um, there is, for the first time in the history of the IT industry, major vendors competing for accessibility. And that is because uh, accessibility features on mobile phones and mobile devices in general, like tablets and others. Those accessibility features are useful to all users, not only on personal with disabilities. So you have scale. So for instance, if you have a mobile phone and you're trying to, to drive, and if you drive in a country or a region where it's not authorized to, not permitted to use your phone when you're driving, but you need to be able to activate your phone by voice, you need to do everything without touching your phone, right? Uh, that is very effective for a person who is a paraplegic, yeah. right? Uh, now, you could be trying to read a text message that's really important to tell you where to meet someone, 
and it is a very sunny place and you just can't read your screen. Well, text to speech becomes a very good tool for you, right? So how about that tool for blind persons? Sure. It's fantastic, right? Uh, when SMS started to expand very quickly, it became the preferred vehicle for uh, deaf persons to communicate among themselves and with their uh, parents and, and friends. So mobile technology has brought in features that are really helping everyone in life but are making a huge difference for possible disability. Second of all, it's there in your pocket, in your hand. You can carry it, it's available all the time. It gives also your geographic position. You have near-field communication to active stuff in your home, and it's unbelievable. Uh, now you look at the, the wearable devices, yeah. the glasses, the watches, uh, maybe some implants sometimes. You know? sure. So uh, you can think about uh, a number of new services, and you know, we, we do that uh, MNA Link Summit once a year in Washington with all the uh, mobile industry that uh, involved in that accessibility thing. And the number of uh, inventions, innovations, and new applications and services that people create with those new tools is mind boggling. Mm -hmm. So, to answer your question, so the big opportunities in the mobile platform, I think eventually, once uh, a person's mobile, uh, will become their universal interface to all kinds of different things. The fan or the heating system in their homes, the ATM at the bank, maybe watching a uh, caption at the cinema, you know, those kind of things. So, uh, and, and, and education has a profound effect as well with tablets being a huge uh, potential for change, you know, in, in terms of serving a student with disability. This interview was filmed to contribute to my forthcoming book, including Your Missing 20%. The book provides a full guide on how to transform your organization to make sure the digital products you create are usable and accessible to all your customers at the most efficient cost. For a chance to win the book when it's published in autumn 2014, email us on book at hassleinclusion.com. Did you like this video? If so, why not share it with your friends? And I've got many more videos on their way with other accessibility experts from all over the world. So make sure you don't miss them by subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much for watching.